The strongest demons of the Chaos God Corn are known as Bloodthirsters. These greater demons are the epitome of rage and indiscriminate slaughter. Barbaric to the point of savage animals, these demons of the Blood God slaughter their enemies with an unquenchable desire for carnage. Their ability to successfully spearhead the assaults of the legions of Corn make them one of the most dangerous warriors of Chaos. Many of these great champions came into existence through the terrible and atrocious acts of the psychically powerful races of the galaxy. If a bloodthirster exists, it is a physical representation of a horrendous act of slaughter perpetrated in real space. Such was the case for the greater demon of corn known as the Ragged Knight. And with that said, I want to welcome you guys back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40k Universe. I am your host, Gersh1, and today we're going to be talking about the Ragged Knight. If you guys are new to the channel, we post Warhammer 40k lore videos every single day. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are interested in 40k, and if you have any questions or any suggestions for topic ideas, comment down below and we'll create a video for you guys. And if you enjoy our content, thank our patrons on Patreon. It is because of them that we can do this. Link in the description if you guys want to support. But with that said, let's get into 40 facts on the bloodthirster known as the Ragged Knight. The greater demon of corn known as the Ragged Knight first appeared in real space during the Steel Era of Old Earth's history. We would know this era as the Middle Ages. During this primitive time in humanity's history, religion and spirituality was a powerful tool used to control the minds of the people of Old Earth. Manipulating the faith of the innocent, a holy man coincidentally named the Innocent preached of a godly mandate to eradicate the Carthor people who inhabited the land of Gaul, also called the Frankish Empire, basically southern France. The Innocent claimed that this genocide was a demand from God, as the Carthor were deemed an affront to his religion. Innocent proclaimed that any knight who took up this crusade against the Carthor would find that their sins before their god were forgiven. Thousands of warriors responded to the Innocent's call and laid siege to Gaul, ending in the massacre of the fortress of Albigensia. Knowing that all their sins were already forgiven, the Crusaders fought with a barbaric savagery that allowed them to break through the Carthor's defenses. When the city finally fell, its survivors were brought before the holy man. Since it was impossible to tell the heretics from the true followers of the Innocent's faith by sight, Pope Innocent III exclaimed, Kill them all, our God will know who is loyal and all the men, women, and children within the broken fortress were massacred before burning the entire edifice to the ground. All of the hate, fear, rage, and terrible sense of betrayal that bled from the people of the fortress as they died flowed into warp space and gave birth to a potent new greater demon in the Immaterium. It was a bloodthirster by the name of the Rage Knight. The manifestation and visions of the bloodthirster haunted all the worshippers of the Innocent's faith for many generations thereafter. Many believe it was a reminder of the terrible act that took place on the orders of a crazed and power-drunk holy man. The Ragged Knight was depicted as having skin, the bleeding red charcoal color of scorched flesh, just like the families who burned in their homes during the siege of the fortress. The demon wore a fire blackened suit of armor that made a mockery of the mail worn by the knights whose atrocity gave it its birth. The fire that lit the horizon as the doomed city blazed burns behind the Ragged Knight's eyes and each of its brats is an echo of 10,000 dying screams. It carries a sword, just as those butchering knights carried their swords, but inscribed with runic curses as a prayer to the glory of the blood god. The Ragged Knight became intrinsically connected to the faith that birthed it into existence. It followed the warriors of the church feeding off the blood they spilled in the name of their god. Those warriors that became honor bound to the faith and bowed to protect it with their sword and shield became the pawns of the bloodthirster. The Ragged Knight would use these supposed valiant warriors to enter the material world in the form of a possession and cause more blood to be spilled. Although some within the church discovered that the demon was feeding off their innocent flock, few had the power to exorcise the demon from their chosen vassal. Only when the demon was satisfied with the amount of mayhem it created would it allow the possession to end by decapitating the human vassal or allowing him to bleed out in a final offering to the god Corn. There are some within the Inquisition that have discovered ancient manuscripts from that era that speak of a full material manifestation of the Ragged Knight. His rage saw the destruction of an entire empire as he marched into war at the front of a large host of cult followers. It was the intervention of a divine warrior wearing gold armor that banished the bloodthirster back into the warp and destroyed the armies he created. The Inquisition claims that this warrior was none other than the Emperor of Mankind himself, and that his battle with the Ragged Knight was one of the earliest encounters that the Emperor had with the forces of chaos. This was never verified by the Emperor himself. Eventually the existence of the Ragged Knight came to the attention of the Black Legion Sorcerer Iskandor Kaon, also known as the Soul Weaver. The Soul Weaver was able to bind the Ragged Knight to his service and trap its essence within one of the leather-bound tarot cards he always carried with him. 
Though the demon was bound to the service of the sorcerer through their summoning pact, it was a rebellious entity that Kaon never actually trusted. Kaon's tutelary demon, Gyre, was the one who kept it in check and in the service of the sorcerer. During the Legion Wars, which was an internal civil war between the traitorous forces that were defeated during the Horus Heresy, the Emperor's Children Legion's 16th, 40th, and 51st Company attacked a space hawk known as his chosen son. It was serving as a meeting ground for Kaon and three other Chaos Space Marine survivors who were attempting to search for Abaddon the Despoiler. With Abaddon to lead them, they hoped to restore the 16th Legion to its former glory after the death of Horus. To defend himself from the Emperor's Children's assault, Kaon summoned the Ragged Knight to his side. The Greater Demon killed 18 Emperor's Children's heretical Astartes in only a few solar seconds, and then proceeded to build a throne for himself from four of their corpses after consuming the other ones. At the Soul Weaver's command, it fought the Chaos Space Marine Lyris, a former member of the Sons of Horus who had fallen to the service of Slanesh and was now the second in command of the Emperor's Children Warband that had just assaulted them. Lyris, a powerful swordsman himself, was able to hold off the demon up until the point that one of his blows succeeded in penetrating the entity's physical body. The burning ooze that sprayed from the wound incapacitated Lyris. As Lyris fell, the Ragged Knight turned his wrath on the Soul Weaver deciding to take that opportunity to be freed from his unwelcome service. Tired of the Bloodthirster's unreliability, the sorcerer succeeded in banishing the creature back into the warp where it still remains today, waiting for another opportunity to enter the material world and massacre entire planets with his flaming sword. And those were 40 facts on the Bloodthirster known as the Ragged Knight. Now, I do want to clarify that the creation of the Ragged Knight is because of an action that happened in real space. That's not always the case. Not all bloodthirsters come from an action uh, or, an, or like blood being spilled in real space. Sometimes the the uh, Chaos God Corn just wills one of these demons to exist, uh, to exist, and then he just pops up. Usually, like it's somebody, it's like a general or something that like it started off as like a regular demon and then kind of worked his way up, um, unless. The god just wants to snap his fingers and create a bloodthirster that's really badass. Uh, that has also happened. If you are interested in learning more about bloodthirsters, if you want to get like a core general understanding of what those demons are, uh, check out our 40 facts on the bloodthirster. It goes through like the different types and then also gives you some examples of uh, real world bloodthirsters. And then if you're interested in just the greater demons of chaos in general, so you have the Bloodthirster, the Great Unclean One, uh, the Keeper of Secrets, and then I forget the last one. Comment down below. I can't I can't remember the last one. But if you're interested in learning about those four greater demons, check out our 40 facts on the um, major greater demons of chaos. And I also want you guys to notice how this was a Black Legion sorcerer who had the control of a bloodthirster. So when we are dealing with chaos undivided, chaos undivided can call upon any of the chaos gods like their greater demons and summon them into battle so if you're playing the tabletop and you want uh like a faction or a, a war band that has all of the greater demons you can do that it's probably not going to be so good on the tabletop but like uh, it's, it's it's possible in the lore because that is what chaos undivided is they just call on the help of all of the chaos gods and um they send their demons forth uh, so keep that in mind also, if you guys are interested in the Legion Wars that I talked about, um, I thought I had a video on them, but I guess I don't. So I'm going to create a video pretty soon on the uh, Legion Wars, which is what happened right after the Horus Heresy. Uh, so the Great Scouring happened, and then when the traitors were in the warp, uh, they kind of fought amongst themselves for a variety of reasons. Well, one, one, um, one in particular, but we'll talk about it when I create that 40 facts video on the Legion Wars. Uh, so subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already uh, to get that sometime this week. And if you guys have suggestions for any other topics, also comment down below. Let me know and I'll try to create a video for you. Thank you guys so much for listening and I'll talk to you tomorrow. This was Gersh1 with One Mind Syndicate signing out. <laughs>